All right, so we are now, we are now live. Great. How's the temperature of the room? Warm? Is it okay? Yeah, it's tolerable. Open the door. That's what you want. Okay. All right. So, a second. Today, we'll take care of them. So just bear with me for a second, then we'll turn on the AC and <clears throat> we'll go from there. So let's start with chapter five, what is real estate? Don't you think this should be the very first question before you sit down because, I mean, you're taking a real estate salesperson license, so you should know what real estate is, right? What are you selling, correct? So <clears throat> who can tell me what real estate is? Real estate is the properties you buy and sell. Okay. So this is a property. I can buy and sell this, but this is not real estate. No, it has to be um, the land. Okay. The housing. Okay. The commercial um, plazas or. So to be real estate, it has to be real property. In real properties, what we're going to address today, the difference between real property and personal property. Real property is something that's fixed. Okay, so the house is a fixed structure, so it's real property. If it's movable, like this remote, right, it's personal property. It goes with you everywhere, it's movable. Okay, so that's the biggest difference between them two is that real property is fixed, personal property is movable. Now, where it says real estate, there's a word, estate. Can anybody tell me what the word estate means? The word itself, estate. You've heard this word before, besides the class, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's the stuff that belongs to someone. Right? Yes. So it's assets. Something we own is my estate. For instance, if I die, or when I die, there's going to be an estate sale. They will sell everything that was owned by me. Does that make sense? This is real estate. So if I own if I own the house, it's real property owned by me. It's my real estate, my real property asset. Got it? So estate. I want you to write asset next to it. Assets. Now, it says real property ownership, so estate, assets, 
ownership, right? Real property ownership is often described as a bundle of rights. So when the person purchases a parcel of real estate, he or she is buying the rights previously held by the seller. Right? It's just a transfer of rights from the seller to you, correct? These rights include the right of possession, the right to use the property in any legal manner, the right of enjoyment, go to the next page, the right of exclusion, and the right of disposition or alienation. These are the five basic rights you guys got to remember. Okay? Can everybody tell me the rights again? The right of the possession. 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 The right of the using a property in any legal manner. Underline legal manner. Because if there's a question that says legal manner or otherwise, then it's talking about illegal as well, and that would be incorrect. If there's a question that describes something illegal, then it's incorrect. Only legal manners, right? The right of enjoyment. It's your property. You can enjoy it, right? What other rights do we have? The right of exclusion. Exclusion. And the right of? Uh, the right of disposition. What does it mean to dispose of something? Get rid of it. Give it up. Get rid of it. Either by selling or gifting in this case, right? So disposition of the nation, that means... I'm getting rid of the property either by a sale or gift. Okay. The right of exclusion, the previous one, hey, it becomes private property. It's mine. I only let whoever I want into the property, correct? Yes? Yes. Within these rights uh, are included further rights to improve, devise, which means leave by will, mortgage encumber, Cultivate, explore, mine, build, lease, license, dedicate, give away, abandon, share. Um, trade or exchange of property. What I want you guys to do right here, it says lease. It says lease. I want you to circle lease. Put an arrow towards this empty space right here. Arrow towards the empty space. And you're going to write demise. D E M I S E. It's the same thing as devise, but with an M for Mary. You need to remember, and I'm going to repeat this a couple times devise is transfer property by will, as it says there, right? And demise is transfer property by lease. The reason why I enforce this is because a lot of people get it confused. They think demise is somebody died. No. Demise means rent up. Transfer property because you need to leave. So when we, we associate demise with death is because the rent of this body is up. So you're going somewhere else. That's what they what they say. You gotta give up the body. But devise is transferred by will. So when you die, you devise through your will property to a um, to, to your heirs. Demise is you transfer property from a landlord to a tenant. There's a lease involved. Very important you guys remember this. Next we have land versus real estate. Where it says land, the term land refers to the surface of the earth, including water and anything attached to it by nature, such as trees and bushes. It also includes the minerals and substances below the earth's surface, together with the airspace above the earth's surface, up to infinity and beyond. Okay. No parents? That usually triggers infinity and beyond. Now you're gonna make me cry. Buzz Lightyear, Toy Story, <laughs> Infinity and Beyond. No? Okay. Usually I get so many. Huh? 
All right. Thus, land may be defined as the earth extending downwards from the surface to the center of the earth and upward to infinity, including all things permanently attached by nature. Now, in front of nature, I want you to write only. So here's what you got to remember. We have the surface right here, flat surface, right? This is your land. But you own everything from the surface down to the center of the earth, everything from the surface up to infinity. This is your space. It's yours. Up or down, but it's yours. You got it? That's land. And I want you to write where it says land on top. I want you to write raw land. So undeveloped, untouched. That's why I told you to write only over here for nature because if you see a description in the state exam that only describes something that was nature, there was not, it's almost impossible to be man-made, right? Then that is land. The moment humans touch it and create something or attach something to it, it becomes real estate. Because the term real estate includes land and all the improvements. So anything that's attached to it. And the word improvement, you guys got to be clear about this. Let's put arrows towards improvements. Include streets, utilities, sewers, other manufactured additions. And the most obvious ones is the buildings on the land, right? So, so a house, for instance. <coughs> but as soon as there's pipes going to the land... It's real estate because nature did not put the pipes there, right? For this water or sewer or gas or electrical. Who put those there? Yeah. We did, right? So it becomes real estate because, again, the word estate means assets. Do you guys just go and do stuff on other people's property? Yeah. No, but you do it on something you own, correct? So assets, estate, ownership, bundle of rights. We can improve the property. You got it? Cool. So, you go all the way at the top, it says, Real estate then is defined as the Earth's surface extending downward to the center of the Earth and upward into space, including all things permanently attached to it by nature or by people, and all rights and benefits and interests in it. So rights, benefits, and interests. That's what the next couple of chapters are going to be about. Now, I told you that you own from the surface level. Look at me for a second. Don't highlight. <laughs> surface level, right? And anything below, correct? Anything below is called subsurface or mineral rights. Subsurface or mineral rights, anything below the surface. Got to remember, remember that, okay? That's why I have it in green. Below the Earth's surface are subsurface or mineral rights. What does that mean to you? Yeah, it means right here, sorry, just oh, this example. It means that a landowner, let's say you, may sell his or her rights to any oil and gas found in the land to an oil company. Where are we going to find oil and gas? Above the Earth's surface? No. Below. So we're selling mineral rights. We're selling these independently, correct? Yes? Yes. So I sell to an oil company. Now, who owns all the oil and the gas? The oil company. You got it? It's no longer me. I own the rest of the real estate, but I sold a right to drill for oil to, into my property, right? You keep the property. I keep the property. You're leasing them. That's how it is. No. I'm selling? not leasing. I sell the right. And because I sold the right, they can come into the land and drill for oil. It's not a lease. It's a sale. 
I cannot touch any oil or gas found in the land. You can. But look, then I could sell the property. And when I sell the property to you, my life versus, right? I sell the property to you. You're the new owner. What do you own? Just the property. Just the property. No. What else? Everything above and below. Everything above, everything below, except for the mineral rights. To oil and gas only. Okay. Remember, what was sold was the rights to oil and gas. If anything else is found on the land, right. it is yours. Oh, okay. Okay, so the only thing that was separated from the whole ownership above or below was gold. the oil. I'm sorry? No, I'm saying you found gold. And yeah, gold. I was going to say if you found gold, it's yours. It's yours. <laughs> now, in this case, absolutely, in this case, the landowner was very smart. He sold the property but reserved the rights to all the coal that may be found on the land. So I sold to you, Malek, right? What did you get? Oh. You got the property, yeah. surface, above, below, minus oil rights, which belong to the oil company, and <clears throat> coal rights, which belong to me, the seller. So I no longer have possession of the property or ownership of the property, but any coal that's found on the land is mine, not yours, the buyer. Okay, so that's where we have here. Oil company owns all the oil and gas, seller owns all the coal, and the new landowner owns the rights to the rest of the real estate. Not bad, right? You guys know what we find in coal? Anybody? Ions. No, no, no. It's something similar to that. Sounds similar. Something you put on wedding rings. <laughs> diamonds, so ions, <laughs> diamonds, <laughs> more like that. That was cool. that was close. You find the coal in the diamond mines. <clears throat> I'm sorry. The coal is where you find the diamond also. A diamond is in the coal. Is in the coal. So after it goes through the natural process, right, and you break the coal, children. It's getting too cold back there, Katrina, Shota. You guys okay? Is it getting cold back there? Sorry. <laughs> they must have lowered too much. I'm sorry. Can I ever win here? Either too cold or too hot. Um, so the coal, once once you open up the coal, if you went through, I forgot the name of the process, but once you open the coal or you break the coal, in, the diamond's inside. And then that's when you shape the diamond. Like it, It's not a diamond yet, it's just a... It looks like a piece of glass, and then you shape it till you get the prime little piece that you need. Okay? So that's how it is. You guys moving away? Maybe it's best. Sorry. All right. Did you guys get this? Easy. All right, we can sell the rights separately, right? Now, air rights. I told you again, before you start highlighting, I told you again, surface is what we own, below and above. Can we sell air rights, anything above? Yes. So. Yes, we can, right? So air rights <coughs> may be sold or leased independently of the land itself. If you guys look, there's a couple of towns. Uh, let let me maybe you can give me the name of that city. Very very famous city that has huge, tall buildings. You guys know what it's called? Like those skyscrapers, really tall buildings. You know the name of the city? Chicago. Chicago. No. Can you carry across the river and be in New York? <laughs> but yes, Chicago as well. <laughs> You're not the first person to say that. <laughs> I always do this because I like to see what people's imagination go to, you know. So, you're not the first one to say uh, Chicago. But yes, New York City. They came up with this uh, ingenious idea of paying people around and say, hey, don't build above this floor. Because anything above this height, pretty much the height floor, right? Anything above this height blocks my view. 
So when I build my project, the skyscraper, I want to be able to sell penthouse views. And that's why they have millions and millions of dollars for these, um, or they ask for millions of dollars for these tiny condos that have a view, <laughs> right? And the worst part is, if you're here in Jersey, right, you have a view of New York, it's beautiful. But if you're in New York, you have a view of Jersey. I mean, yeah. why would you pay $10 million to look at Jersey? Okay. <laughs> it's a joke, I like Jersey. It's true. Right, you start thinking about it, be quiet. Look at the Hoboken, we all get all this stuff. It's more status, people. Take somebody when you get crazy ideas. That's your need goes different direction. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. All right. So, again, surface, right? We talked about below, we talked about above. But below or next to the property, joined with the surface might be something called water. So if there's water attached to your property, you might have water rights. And those are littoral or repairing rights. There's an easy way to remember this and I have it in green, which is littoral starts with L and refers to lakes or large bodies of water, standing water. That's littoral rights. Riparian <clears throat> starts with R, so it refers to rivers or anything that has a stream. Okay? Littoral, standing water, large bodies of water. Riparian, river, or stream. You might own part of a river. You might own part or all of a lake. You got it? Good so far? So, if a stream is identified as not navigable in the Federal Survey map, its bed is owned by the owner or owners of the adjoining land who have certain repairing rights and to allow them to use the water. And if you guys go to the top, we have the figure. We have not navigable. And I'm sorry, there's a line over here in your book. Um, in my book, unfortunately, when you got scans, that line disappears. But if you have a non navigable river or stream, means that public boats cannot go, go, go through, like large commercial boats cannot go through, right? Then you own the property from here to the center of the stream. And the other person on the property from there to the center of the stream. You got it? If it's navigable, that means there's enough room for boats to go through, right? Then you own the property up to where the land stops. Okay? From there on, the waters belong to the public. public. You got it? So the difference is how high or how low is the bed? Is there enough room for commercial boats to go through? If not, then you own part of the water. If yes, then the water is owned by the public. Now, realtors, we don't have to dive. Don't worry. If you're scared of, is afraid of water, you don't have to. Okay, it says Federal Survey Map. If you have, um, if you search the Federal Survey Map, it says, okay, these are navigable waters or non-navigable waters, okay? Simple. Now, normally, <coughs> sorry. Normally, when two properties have a stream as their common border, the dividing line between the two properties is the middle of the stream, as I explained. But if the stream, <coughs> if the stream were suddenly to change its course, which is a process known as avulsion, okay? the property line would not move, but would remain where it always had been. 
So if the water changes direction for any reason, that's called avulsion, if it changes direction for any reason, the property line is still the center of the stream. Good so far? Yes? If it changes the size of the stream, yes, <clears throat> things change. So let's understand, there's something we're going to talk about right now, which is accretion and erosion. So accretion is gaining land and erosion is a loss of land. So it is possible that the river widens based on flows, right? And if it widens because the water, the, the land here was softer, then it goes into your property. And guess what? This person here gained land. So absolutely, you're right. That's a very good question. So accretion, I want you guys to write addition or increase in land as it says there. Accretion is an increase in land caused by the gradual depositing of a solid material called alluvium by a contiguous body of water. It is the opposite of erosion, which results in loss of property. So accretion, you gain property. Erosion, you lose property. <clears throat> you hear accretion, think of addition. Accretion, addition. And there's a third one, <clears throat> relation. Now, relation is the creation of dry land by the gradual withdrawal of water from the, the land by lowering of its surface level. Okay? So, relation is creation of dry land by taking water out. You take water out, the land dries. You gain land. Got it? Relation. Next page. I want you to go to where it says real property versus personal property. I already started the chapter explaining the difference between real property and personal property. Right? Real property is fixed. So if you guys want to write there as a quick summary, right above real property, you're going to write fixed and immovable. Fixed, immovable. or personal property, movable. So right below it says personal property, right to movable. Real property is fixed and immovable. You can't move it. Personal property is movable. We're gonna repeat all this in this uh, section, but Everything that can be owned may be classified as either real or personal property. And anything that can be inherited, please help me out, is called? Inherited. Estate. Anything that can be inherited is called what? Asset. It's right here. It's highlighted in yellow. Right here. It's in this one. Have you it? I don't know how to pronounce it. It doesn't matter how you pronounce it. I'm just trying to make a point. There's a few words that are going to start becoming complicated. Okay? This is just to make a point. A few words are going to be complicated right now. Hereditament is one of them. There's going to be chattels or chattels. You can pronounce it whatever way you want. As long as you understand to the core what it is, I really don't care how you pronounce it right now. You should obviously, along the way, learn the proper pronouncing. There's people with 20 years of experience and still call themselves realtors. There's no A. There's no relation. There's no relators or anything like that. It's real tour, not realtor. Yeah. And they write it as real a tour. Yeah, okay, that is incorrect. There's people today that have been doing this for so long. And the word equity, they call it equity. Does not exist. It's equity. 
but I really don't care because they're making money. Do you understand my point? Right now, understand that core, what these things mean. And then along the way, perfect yourselves to learn the correct pronouncing. You got it? So just like when you're learning basic English, nobody complains and goes like, no baby, you're saying it wrong. Wow, she said this word or he said this word, right? As the babies grow. It's amazing how they, that they try to say it. And that's all I care about. Your baby's right now. You got it? Along the way, you grow, you learn the proper pronouncing. So anything that can be inherited is a resident and real estate or real property has already been defined as the earth surface including the permanent additions and growing things attached to it, the airspace above it, and the minerals below it. Personal property, also called personality, is all property that does not fit the definition of real property. <coughs> we already ex expressed this above, but I want you to highlight them for the stars. While real estate is fixed and immovable, personal property is Movable. With a bunch of stars. Real estate is fixed and immovable. Personal property is movable. <coughs> Giving you a heads up, the next chapter there's gonna be weirder words. It's it worse. So tangible personal property is also referred to as chattels, chattels, whatever way you want to say it. You want to sound French, you want to sound nice, fancy. Call it chattels. You want to do the American way? Call it chattels. That's it. And remember, chattel is very similar to cattle. What is cattle? Anybody can tell me what cattle is? Cows. 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 And what is the sound that cows make? Movable. That's what they make. Because chattels, like cattle, is movable. Remember that. Don't go moo in the state exam. Okay? <laughs> But well, that's what it is, okay? And this includes such items as furniture, clothing, refrigerators, and bonds. So pretty much anything that's not attached to the property is movable, therefore shadows, okay? You guys good so far? Questions? Okay. Now, it says the distinction between personal and real property. <coughs> Sorry. The distinction between personal and real property is of great importance to who? To the real estate practitioner. You guys. You need to know what's real and what's personal property. Why? Because buyers and sellers, I have this highlighted, must be clearly guided, must be guided to a clear written agreement of what goes with the property and what doesn't. Because look, I'm selling you the business right here. You guys are buying the school. There are some stuff that might be included, some stuff that might not be included. The walls are included because you're transferring the lease. But are the chairs included? Are the tables included? Is the computers included? Does that make sense? So you need to know what's included and not included. Very important. And the methods of transfer for the two defer. For instance, real property ownership is transferred by a deed. While personal property is transferred by Bill of sale. So circle, real property, circle deed, circle, personal property, and bill of sale. You got to know the difference. Anything that's movable, like chairs, Personal property, transferred by bill of sale. Anything that's fixed, transferred by deed. Now, it is possible to change the status of an item of real estate to personal property. Like a tree. A tree is real estate, right? Because it's fixed. But if the owner cuts it down, severing it from the earth, so severing means cut, right? Then it becomes personal property. It's no, no longer attached, it's movable, correct? And the opposite is also possible. Personal property could become real property. And I'll give you the best example. You guys go to Home Depot, and you guys are going to buy sheetrock, two by fours, nails, 
uh, maybe glue, maybe spackle, maybe uh, wires, electrical, right? All that stuff. From Home Depot, you get a, uh, a receipt. <clears throat> you get a receipt, and that receipt details what's yours. That receipt, what we call today as a receipt, is called a bill of sale. Isn't that what it is? Yes. Bill of sale itemizes what's yours. Got it? You bring it here, you put it on the floor. It's still personal property. But as soon as you put the wall up, it becomes real property because now it's fixed. So while it's movable from Home Depot here, personal property. Once we build this, it becomes real property. You got it? Very important. At the bottom, <clears throat> vegetation falls into two classes. We have trees and perennial bushes. And grasses that do not require cultivation, these underline do not require cultivation, are considered <clears throat> Real estate. So anything that does not require cultivation is considered real estate. Annual crops, such as wheat, corn, and garden vegetables are known as emblems and are considered personal property. So remember, if it requires cultivation, meaning you're putting it there and then you're removing it later, then it belongs to you as personal property. If it's trees that have been there, they're permanently fixed, they are real property. They belong with the property, right? You guys good? <coughs> On the right hand side, we have fixtures. You guys see it? An article that was once personal property, but has been so attached to the land or the building that it is now considered part of real estate is a fixture. So, examples of fixtures are heating systems, elevator equipment, kitchen cabinets, built-in dishwashers, and lights and plumbing fixtures. What does that mean? Isn't the light fixtures? Permanently attached to it? Can we just move it around? No. Plumbing, can we just move them around? No. Okay? So these are fixtures and they're considered real estate. Almost any item, almost any item that has been added as a permanent part of the building is considered a fixture. And we're saying almost any item because then we have tenant and trade fixtures. For instance, an article owned by a tenant and attached to a rented space for use in conducting business is a trade fixture. Circle business, circle trade, you need to remember that every time you hear trade fixture, it talks about businesses. For instance, we have a projector right here, right? The projector is fixed, isn't it? Is it removable? Yes. Is it movable? No, it's not movable. It's fixed, but I can remove it. Because it belongs to the business, it's a tool of the trades, therefore, it's called a trade fixture. You got it? Tools of the trades, trade fixtures. Skip to the last sentence there. It says, tenants must remove their trade fixtures before the termination of their lease. And any fixtures that are not removed after the lease expires become real property of the landlord. Oh, that's how it is. Oh, yes. My lease expires tonight. I do not take the anything out of here. Yes. When I come back, the owner could have changed the lock. As soon as they change the lock, that's it. And even though when your lease expires, regardless of what changing the lock, you, you will not be able to take it out. Now you're trespassing. 
because the lease is over, and he can claim, oh, these are mine. Yeah. But since the lease is over, you know. So exactly that. Lovely, isn't it? I didn't know that. It's new learning, especially in, in commercial. But if the lease expired and you go back, you're trespassing. Mm -hmm. So anything that's there belongs to the owner. Mm -hmm. Property. All right. Trade fixtures. Next page. Trade fixtures differ from other fixtures in the following ways. Fixtures belong to the owner of real estate, but trade fixtures are usually owned and installed by a tenant for his or her business use. Again, trade fixtures, business. Okay? Next. Fixtures are considered a permanent part of the building, but trade fixtures are removable. I did ask that before, didn't I? Are they removable? Yes. Look what I have highlighted. The tenant must, however, restore the property to its original condition before the end of the lease. So before we leave, I must take that projector out of here and replace the tile that I damaged to put a hole through. Does that make sense? Next, fixtures are legally considered real estate, but trade fixtures are legally considered to be personal property because they belong to who? Business. Business. So they're business, personal property. You guys good so far? <laughs> what about tenants? Personal property. Residential tenants. Personal property? Yeah, they have their furniture and their beds, yeah. Yeah, but what about stuff that's attached? For instance, look what it if says. They put a chandelier in here. They can replace it with something comfortable. They can? You sure? They, I'm saying if they put it in, they can take it out and replace it with something. And ask Are you it. sure? No. Unless there's stipulation. No. Let's go through this. <laughs> tenant fixtures can also be no. fixtures installed by a tenant in residential rental properties, including such items as bookcases, chandeliers, or even stoves. I have it in green. Please highlight, underline, put stars, arrows, bubbles, without a prior written okay. agreement. Anything that you, the tenant, installs becomes property of the landlord. Go ahead and install a chandelier. Go ahead and try to replace it. Remember. Nobody calls the You can take it out before the lease. Yeah. I mean, they can remove before. Before the lease. Before the lease. What if I inspect the property? Because I'm entitled to inspect the property. But that's how it is. Oh, All right. Or at least annually. My lease is clearly state that every six months I will inspect the property. Before, and after they, uh, Before during, and after. Oh, wow. But we'll talk about this in chapter 12. There's a chapter just for leases. Now, you said that most people don't follow through with it. No. How many of you knew about this? I didn't know that. Isn't it great that the landlords don't know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they don't follow through because they don't know the law. But anything and everything you improve in the landlord's property belongs to the landlord if you did it without the written permission of the landlord, okay? For state exam, forget the rules, uh, the day-to-day -day rules that you're used to, for state exam purposes, if you see a question that doesn't address the permission of the landlord, then who does it belong to? The landlord, period. Now, if tenants, based on our agreements, if tenants are allowed to remove the fixtures, they are also expected yeah. to restore the property to its original condition before. before they vacate the premises. But look what it says. If they are allowed to remove, how would they be allowed to remove? Because we have a written agreement. Correct. So if the landlord says no, then that chandelier belongs to me. That brand new stove you just installed belongs to me. I get the newest and best. You can leave it to your hand but break it. Oh my God! Really? That's called vandalism. I call the cops on you. Yeah. All right. Legal test of the fixture. Mm -hmm. Courts apply four basic tests to determine whether a disputed article is a fixture. That means part of real estate. 
or removable personal property. And these tests are based on, number one, the intention of the party annexing the item. Number two, the method of annexation of the item. Number three, the adaptation of the article to real estate. And number four, the relationship of the parties. There's an easy acronym to remember this. We just got to rearrange things a little bit. But number two is the method of annexation, right? So it starts with M and A. If you guys want to write it down, it's MARIA that, the, that we're going to use, the acronym. MARIA is the acronym. So for M, we have method. For A, annexation. So method of annexation. So we have Marie. Okay. Method of Okay. Then it's the relationship, and I'm sorry for my handwriting, I'm lefty and this is not um Relationship, the best thing of the parties, the intention of the parties annexing the item, and finally, the adaptation of the article. So, there are four steps. Number one, two, three, four. Four steps. <clears throat> Easily remembered by Maria. Method of annexation, relationship of the parties, intention of the parties annexing the item, and the adaptation of the article to the property. Good? Sorry, the fourth is? Uh... Adaptation. I need to work on my penmanship for this board. Good? Yes? You guys wrote it down? Everybody? Okay, cool. So, that's what we have here. One, two, three, and four. It's just I rearranged them to spell Maria, right? So, method of annexation. The relationship of the parties, the intention of the party annexing the item, and the adaptation of the article to the real estate. Maria. Now, although these tests seem simple, there is no uniformity in court decisions regarding what constitutes a fixture. Articles that appear to be permanently affixed sometimes have been held by courts to be personal property, and items that do not appear to be permanently attached have been held to be fixtures. For example, it says right here that a wall-to-wall -wall carpeting could be interpreted as the installation of an area rug right on top. So it's wall-to-wall, -wall, but depending on how it's attached, what was the intention of the person attaching it, right? It might be removable. So the seller could remove it even if it was not specifically stated in the listing agreement or contract. Now, what about this? The keys, front door key. Is this movable? Yes. So is this a fixture or personal property? Is it? It's a fixture because it's in the door. Say louder. It's a fixture because it's in this part of the door. So even though this is movable, it belongs to the door. Therefore, fixture. It belongs to the house. When we sell the house, don't we want to have the front door key? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So can the seller take it with him or her? No. It must be passed along because it's part of the property. So these are clearly fixtures that belong to the house. So licensees should be sure to ask the sellers which items are and are not included in the transaction. You gotta be very clear. Walk into every room, even if it's empty, and ask, 
Mr. and Mrs. Sellers, is there anything here that you would like to include or exclude from the transaction? You'll be surprised, okay? Always ask, very important, all right? Good, any questions? No, all right, so we're done with this chapter. I'm gonna give you guys a quick break as I set up for the next one, okay? Remember, coffee's in the back, you got water, bathroom, keys are over there.